Topics podcast is the premier relationship podcast that explicitly deals with relationship matters from a woman's point of view. No subject is off limits. Relationship challenges, sex, intimacy, dating, infidelity, finances, heartbreak, and situationships are all a part of the discussion. Your relationship matters. Welcome. Hello and welcome to Diva Speaks Relationships. You have tuned in to the hottest, grown, sexiest, realest relationship podcast out of the Queen City, aka Charlotte, North Carolina. How you doing? Tuesday evening. I am the diva of Diva Speaks Relationships. That's right. And Gayla's on the mic. <laughs> I um, I hope you guys are doing well. You know, I hope that this um, this podcast finds you blessed in good spirits. And if you're not in good spirits, I want you to know that if you are able to hear me is still blessed. You're part of the living. Your story has not ended because God has given you another day to turn things around. Another day of grace, mercy, and favor. You just got to see it through. So just sit tight, continue to walk through your storm, and continue to walk by faith. And just remember that the word says, what does it say, Diva? It says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered. So I want you to stay connected to your God so that he can tell you what to do in whatever area of your life that you are unhappy with. That's my encouragement for this Tuesday night. Yes. So um, let me position my microphone just a little bit. I want to talk to you guys a little bit today. Yes. So guys, um, as always, I love to begin the show with acknowledging those of you who have been my loyal followers, my supporters, my subscribers. You are appreciated. Oh, yes, you are. And this is not some shallow statement that I'm making over the mic. This is from my heart, I sincerely thank you because I am intelligent enough and grateful enough to know that there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there that you could be listening to. Some are far more popular with um, high profile guest celebrities, but you chose to listen to Diva Speaks Relationships. You were generous with your time with me, and I appreciate you. So for that, I want to say thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Can I say thank you? Thank you so much. Um, If you haven't had a chance to follow me on social media, let me invite you to do so. Two of my platforms I really, really would love for you to look into, my Facebook Um, account is facebook.com the backslash symbol true diva speaks true diva speaks just put that in the search field and you will arrive at my facebook page which will also give you a link to the group real women candid conversation so i would love your support on those platforms also, if you are a big Instagrammer, you can find Diva Speaks on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Diva Speaks, the underscore symbol. You know that little line that sits on the margin or on the line? Okay, so Diva Speaks, the underscore sign official. That's where you can find me on Instagram. So I want you to know that um, I'm out there. You can find me and we can engage with one another on different relationship content because that's what I do yes that's what I do 
So I have some exciting news. For those of you that follow me, this is not new to you, but if you just happening to be tuning in to the very first time, first and foremost, welcome, welcome to the show. Um, I actually recorded, listen guys, we taped this weekend the very first, the first of many, my premiere, my debut show, <laughs> Diva Speaks Relationships TV. Now, I'm just not talking about Diva Speaks Relationships TV on some old other platform and we just stuck TV behind it. No, honey, I'm talking about Diva Speaks is coming to your television set. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes, I'm so excited. Um, we taped. You can find the very first show on, excuse me, Access 21 if you have or subscribe to Spectrum Cable. You can find it on AT&T Uverse, Roku TV, as well as Video On Demand and the actual website. So, But you know what? If you follow me on any of my platforms, the links to find all of that is at your fingertips so um so here here's how it's gonna go so diva speaks relationships official air date okay my air dates where you can find me on tv you can turn on that tv set honey and the diva is there baby like bam 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 i'm there okay so my air dates are january 8th and 22nd february 2nd and 26th and March 12th and 26th at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes, can I repeat that for you? Okay, I will. So my official air dates, when you can turn on your TV and find me, which will be on the second and fourth Friday of every month, starting in January. January the 8th and 22nd, February 2nd and 26th, March 12th and 26th, at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, yes, I'm so excited. We taped the first show. I had four guests on the show. We talked about illicit affairs, sex scandals, pimps in the pulpit, and what exactly is going on in church culture today. We chopped it up. So, um, just to give you a little bit of information, I did have a pastor on the set to bring some balance, some spirituality, as well as a practical perspective to the conversation. I had a millennial on the set to actually um, just give her opinion about how the younger generations um, are receiving church culture, as well as my two um, my two buds from 104.4 FM radio, um, two of the radio personalities from the Midday Madness show joined me on the set. So between the five of us, we actually had a wonderful discussion. We kept it classy. There was no tearing down of anybody, but I need you to stay tuned, stay connected. So when the show airs, my actual premiere, you will be there and you will be able to follow. And I have some more exciting um, topics that we're going to be discussing on uh, the actual Diva Speaks Relationships television show. So we good? We good? Okay. I want to make sure we're good. And by now, if you haven't shared Diva Speaks with somebody, if you haven't shared some things, uh, I mean, a podcast show, um, the website, diva-speaks-official.com or divaspeaks.podbean.com, shame on you. You're trying to keep me to yourself. Don't be stingy like that. Don't do that. This is the spirit of giving. This is the season of giving, okay? Give back. So, here's what brought me to the mic today. You know, sometimes you you have something so thought-provoking and something that touches you in a way that you go, hmm, now that, that makes a lot of sense. Or you're like, damn! <laughs> that was on point. Well, today I had one of those moments and I'm not going to take credit for what I'm about to share with you, but I definitely wanted to present it on the table for you to feast off of what I'm about to say. 
Now this is not going to be my typical long show because sometimes it doesn't take a very long time to explain or get your point across. What do the young people say? What's understood doesn't really need to be explained? Yeah, so I'm not going to take up too much of your time. So the title of today's show is Loving Beyond Your Means. Mm-hmm. What you thinking about over there? Get your mind out the gutter. Don't do that. Come on back. <laughs> Come on back. We're not going there. Loving beyond your mm-hmm. You know what? I wish I had a glass of wine right now. I think that would really, really help me deliver this content. But... I don't, so I digress. So, we're going to be talking about loving beyond your means. And a lot of times when we think about the term beyond your means, it's an indication that that is something you cannot afford, which probably means there are going to be some other things in your life that fall by the wayside or that may be neglected because you are beyond what you can do or what you have, right? That's what I think about. When people talk about like living beyond their means, they may have an income of X amount of dollars with probably zero to little disposable income because, you know, the amount of bills and expenses that they have far exceed what they have coming in. Typically, that's what um, we think of, what I think of when we talk about living beyond your means, right? Are you with me so far? You know, sometimes you have to, um, in order to get things back on track, you have to let some things go so that you can reposition yourself to live comfortably with what you have. And sometimes that can be hard if you've been living beyond your means for a while. We're all human. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. We all have deficiencies in some area of our life and thinking. But today, guys, I stumbled across something that was so yummy that I had to talk to you about it. Okay, so I'm not going to take credit for that because let me let me be very clear. I am a smart enough woman to know that I don't know it all. Contrary to what my husband says, I know that I don't know it all, right? (laughs) I know that. And I understand sometimes sharing what I know is good, but there are other resources and vessels that information can flow through to me and I can share it with you and this is one of those moments so let me give props out to the sister first and foremost whom whose content in writing I'm about to share her name is Derricka Harwell and she's an African-American um, sister out of Memphis Tennessee she's a self-made millionaire and when I tell you the sister is bad she is B-A-D bad in all in every good way imaginable she is it and she doesn't mind tooting her own horn to to beep beep because she's put in the work she's done the work she's been tried and tested and whatever she's doing as far as credit and wealth building it works for her it works for her clients and uh, she's super successful well shout shout out to Derricka Harwell um, you can find her on Facebook so that's whose content I'm about to share and what is the inspiration behind tonight's episode so here goes let me read it to you I might read it twice just so some of you can get it. Financial tip of the day. Living beyond your means can also be loving, in parentheses, financially beyond your means. Too often we hear people say, I gave my last to someone else without realizing how how financially unhealthy this this behavior actually is. If you both are broke, 
what good has this behavior truly done? It's okay to unapologetically focus on your own wealth building. You can help even more when you're stable and you've secured you and your family financially. Remember, you can express your love without having to give your money. You can volunteer your time, your talents, your prayers, and so much more. But I, I don't advise sinking your ship to keep someone else's boat afloat. Get your yacht, sis. Bring your people on board and teach them how to fish. <laughs> some of you not going to get it, but some of you are. And for those in the back that couldn't hear me the first time, I'm going to read it again because this was so powerful. Living beyond your means can also be loving, in parentheses, financially beyond your means. Too often we hear people say, I gave my last to someone else without realizing how financially unhealthy this behavior actually is. If you both are broke, what good has this behavior truly done? It's okay to unapologetically focus on your own wealth building. You can help even more when you're stable and you've secured you and your family financially. Remember, you can express your love without having to give your money. You can volunteer your time, your talents, your prayers, and so much more. But I don't advise sinking your ship to keep someone else's boat afloat. She did that. <laughs> Get your yacht, sis. Bring your people on board and teach them how to fish. She bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> she broke it down so eloquently. She dispensed relationship advice as well as financial tips at the same time. That's a bad woman. And you know, it struck a nerve with me because I've often heard a lot of people say, I gave my last. To such and such or I gave my all to such and such and it's never when things are good it is never at the peak of happiness during the good times it's usually when things begin to unravel in the relationship when people seem to have regrets buyers remorse about their decision to continue in a relationship where they did not reap the benefits or the rewards that they had set their sights on or that they were expecting. The relationship didn't deliver. Perhaps things have gotten off track. And you know, if unchecked, sometimes when a person has given their all or given their last and things don't work out, it can leave a, a person very much or very well bitter, broken, and destitute. But can you really blame someone else if you've been financially irresponsible because you were loving beyond your means in an effort to keep someone else happy when you know that you couldn't afford to? Do we really put the onus on the other person or do you need to look at yourself and take accountability for a, a poor decision or judgment that you made? I mean, really? Sacrifice is definitely honorable in any healthy and, and loving relationship. I think some of the best relationships throughout time um, actually come with sacrifices. A lot of compromising, a lot of understanding and commitment to see things through. 
sacrifice is definitely honorable because I, I tend to think that people that give their last or give their all to the point of depletion um, to some extent are sacrificing but you should not have to empty yourself or your bank account consistently to keep the other person happy especially if it leaves you on ground zero you know I always like to emphasize that balance is a sign of true maturity you have to balance that bank account that checkbook your bills and what you need to live your disposable income does not need to be exhausted on another another human being and their happiness that is irresponsible and it's definitely a sign of immaturity in that area I don't know any other way to put it, but, you know, I see so many women, especially on TikTok, they have so many, I mean, hundreds of these videos of the women that have been in long-term relationships, mm -hmm, long-term relationships, marriages, and we're talking about no less than 5, 10, 15, the longest I saw was 25 years, and the women tell their story in a 60-second clip or in a part series <laughs> you know the different segments where they gave their all they made so many sacrifices and they stayed in a relationship and after you know X amount of time the relationship has dissolved or the man walked away and they are left feeling empty because they felt like not only did I sacrifice what I had in terms of money to keep everything afloat but I gave you my heart and you end up walking away and you're leaving me not only emotionally bankrupt, but financially bankrupt as well. And so when I, when I read this post from this badass businesswoman from the South, it clicked. It clicked that we have to be more responsible for the choices that we make with our money because times are hard. And even if you are well right now, if all is well with your bank account, your investments, your portfolios, your stocks, your savings, if you have at least 30 to 40% of your income is disposable income, you're doing okay by COVID standards. So in an effort to please someone, whether you are a man or a woman, you gotta ask yourself, if things fell apart today, will I regret anything that I have done? Will the sacrifices that I made be all in vain? You gotta ask yourself that. It is my personal opinion, guys, that I think breakups get really, really nasty and they get really, really ugly. When a person starts taking inventory at the end of the relationship and they realize that I spent more than I could afford on this relationship in terms of money, in terms of time, in terms of, um, hell, everything, your peas, your money, your time, you spent way more than you could afford. You could not afford to be there, but you, you chose to stay. And when you start taking inventory towards the end, then you get bitter, then you get angry, and then you're, you're looking at like, well, hell, I'm walking away with nothing. I gave it all to you to make me you happy and you mean to tell me that I get to walk away with nothing yeah that can, that can turn things pretty ugly I think now is a point in time there may be someone out there experiencing some of what I just discussed you could be very well out there 
And I'm saying to you today, take a minute to listen to the show and the post that I read at the beginning of it. It's okay to be in love and work through your problems, but still take care of yourself financially because that's what a responsible adult does. And in the end, you have to ask yourself when you are spending money that you know you do not have, whether it is for bills or for your savings or for something down the road that you know you would like to purchase or invest in, you got to ask yourself, if it falls apart today, what the hell am I going to do? Am I going to be okay with what I've done for this person, how much I have invested in this person? And if you cannot afford to be okay with that decision, if you cannot afford to walk away empty-handed, then I challenge you to change your spending habits right now because being in love and being in a relationship does not mean you have to em empty your pockets. Are you an ATM? Are you a sugar daddy? Are you a trick? Or are you um, one of two people in a relationship? There are so many things out here that can be done without you having to go into your pocket. Hell, some of the best things in life can be experienced for free and for those of you who say no well I dare to challenge you to expand your thinking and to try and research different activities that you can engage in with your partner so that they can enjoy the relationship as well as their money okay so many beautiful places to see. What will a tank of gas in your car, how far will that get you? Have you really actually visited all of the national parks? Have you explored any of the museums that are around your city? Can you be creative and think of something fun and exciting and different you can do without placing an unnecessary burden on your mate to feel as if they have to fulfill an unrealistic expectation in order to keep you happy? What does it say about you if you are on the receiving end of someone's financial generosity and you see that they're giving you their all and you allow them to do it you see that they're going under but you don't care as long as you get what you want what does that say about you are you just in it to get what you can get and to hell with it and if they can't deliver then you're on to the next Far it be for me to tear down the next person, but if that is how you're rocking, you're dead ass wrong. You see, showing kindness to someone doesn't always have to be a smile. Sometimes you can say, no, 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 put your money back up. But no, we don't have to spend that amount of money this time. I got something else planned for us. Or let me treat you because your happiness matters to me as well. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing now. That's what we're doing now. So from this day forward, if this applies to you, we're going to be intentional with loving within our means. And that means putting a cap financially on what you know realistically that you can do for the person that you love. Taking care of that person by not allowing them to indulge in poor spending habits. Because keeping you happy should also mean that you wanna keep me happy, baby? 
Well, keeping me happy means me seeing you happy. And if you're not happy because you're trying to keep me happy, then we're both not happy. So let's balance this out. You need to get caught up on a few things, sweetheart. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to execute a plan. And we're going to go and discover some wonderful things around town and the city and the state or across the country that we can do together in an effort to enjoy one another. And sometimes saving money means planning things in advance. That's what that means. Because sometimes it costs a little bit more for that spontaneity or to be spontaneous. I don't think I use that word right. <laughs> I don't care. Because <laughs> you know the beauty of being comfortable with yourself, you can laugh at yourself. Hell, I laugh at myself a lot. So guys, those are the jewels that I wanted to drop on you tonight. I wanted to lavish you with that information. Loving beyond your means. And if it made you go, hmm, well, I did my job. Didn't I? I did it well. And I was woman enough to let you know that I didn't have the original thought, but I definitely wanted to talk about it. So, I told you this wasn't going to be long at all. This was going to be a quickie. Some of you love quickies. Don't sit there and act like you don't. You freaking love quickies. And I just gave you one, honey. I took you on a ride and now we are over. But I don't want you to forget about, uh, don't forget about the diva. Coming to accent, well, <laughs> coming to. I'm just waiting on uh, my director to finish editing the show and then um, I'll get the official air date for the premiere of Diva Speaks Relationships TV. Again, guys, you can find it on Access 21. If you have Spectrum Cable, AT&T U-verse, a Roku TV or video on demand, or if you even have access to the internet, you can find the Diva on TV. And I invite you to be a part of the audience for my very special day. I sincerely and genuinely thank all of you for your continued support. You are appreciated. So, until the very next time, stay warm, stay kind, stay in love, and stay blessed. And, you know what? You know what I say, right? What do I say? What do I say at the end of every show? matters from a woman's point of view no subject is off limits relationship challenges sex intimacy dating infidelity finances heartbreak and situations